So today we're going to look at the topic of how fore and aft balance is really a key part in you being able to stay in control and make the skis grip and give you nice kind of smooth fluidity down the slope. Hi, my name's Tom Gelly. I'm a level four examiner, instructor with the APSI, a two-time demo team member, and I'm really interested in the biomechanics of skiing. I'd really like to help those skiers that are at the point where they're really trying to ski steeper blues, blacks, uh, and when the snow gets a bit, bit firmer and slipperier, those skiers, when they get on that type of terrain and they find they can't keep uh, rhythm, fluidity, and they, they kind of lose grip at the end of the turn. So we're really gonna look at how we can help you if that sounds like you as the skier. Let's go take a look. So a shorter turn is really the, uh, the type of turn we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna warm up on our way to some steeper terrain, doing some short turns, because we can just control our speed more often with that. And it's actually in the short turn that it's much harder to get your four and a half balance right. So we're gonna start off working straight into some, into some short turns. Really focused on a good rhythm, consistent, continuing motion all the way around my turns. And I'm gonna start paying attention to my foot pressures. So I just started paying attention to my foot pressures and here's the reason why. When you're skiing on a slope, <clears throat> if we just take one turn from like totally across the hill to across the slope, so 90 degrees to the fall line, okay? From the start of the turn, the first half, basically the run is getting steeper. So I need to adjust my whole center of mass and weight forward to be in balance. But only for this part. Many people still stay forward through the end of the turn. Now from the fall line down here, almost like coming off of a skateboard ramp, uh, you need to adjust your weight differently. So you have to go back slightly, okay? So we have to be forward at the beginning and then move more back on the skis towards the end of the turn to be centered on our ski so it grips. As I said, at the beginning of the turn being forward matches my body to the slope, but it also helps me pivot my skis more freely. The weight being forward I can steer my skis easily. If I stay forward, my skis keep pivoting <laughs> like this, forward, and I don't want that. So to help stop that continual like rotation, that's why I need to move my weight back a bit. That's why I need to feel through the soles of my feet where my body weight and pressure is. Okay. Really nice bit of flat terrain to practice just moving the feet without turning. And if I use a pulling motion, you'll see the skis want to come back afterwards. If I just push, push, they don't want to come back. The tension in the muscles pulling, pulling, I end up a little more forward. So I'm just going to exaggerate so you can see me actively moving uh, to the heel. And how I'm gonna do that? I'm not gonna sit back. I'm gonna use my feet and ankles and move them forward. I'm going to pull them through the turn a little bit more and that's gonna get me on my heels. Really feel the tail bite here, here, as I pull my feet through. So the fore and aft balance adjustment you're working on really helps you to grip the tail of the ski at the end of the turn. A lot of people are afraid of using the tail and being in the back seat, but we're talking about a specific moment in time and a specific how to do it. So if you do it in this way, you're not gonna feel back seat, you're gonna feel the ski grip, hold, and actually uh, push you or pop you into the next turn. Okay, so you should be able to see that in slow motion here that the feet move from sort of being on my side through to almost being in front of me. And that's an active movement to just stay in balance.
So a feeling you can, I guess, use taking your skis off on a steeper pitch. When I'm standing across the slope here, I can be very relaxed, I'm, I'm sort of centered. If I stand 45 degrees down the hill, you'll notice I'm, I'm more flexed in my joints. I have to keep pressure on my heel to not fall head over heels. This is the same sensation, same position I need to be in to stop the tail of the ski washing out through the end of the turn. Because if I go forward from here, I lose my balance, the tails of my, or heels of my boots come off. Even ever so slightly, the icier the snow, the steeper the run, the more that's gonna mean your tails are gonna wash out. All right, so on this next pitch, I'm gonna to attempt to not adjust my four and a half balance. I'm not going to move to the back of my foot and try and get the tails to grip. I'm gonna stay forward. And what you should see is the tails are gonna to continue to drift and it's gonna be hard for me to control the completion or just the end of the turn. So directly for me, that straightaway feels like I lose any flow and rhythm. I come to an abrupt stop because my skis tails keep spitting and then I, and I stop hard versus So hopefully you can see the difference there of not adjusting my weight back, just trying to stay forward the whole time and actively changing my weight and pressure along the length of the ski. Today, I've got Carve in my ski boots, which is a digital ski coach. It's an insole that goes under my liner and it measures all these different metrics. So one metric that Carve measures is four and a half balance. So I'm going to take a run and I'm going to undo my boots, the top buckles of my boots, so that I really get more pure data from just the pressure sensors under my feet, because that's really where we ski through, the soles of our feet. So we're just going to be interested in looking at what the data, the raw data shows us skiing down here without our boots undone. So the boots undone. I'm definitely relying more on the balance through the soles of my feet, my body, not the equipment. So I've really got to be spot on with where the pressure goes under my feet as the turn changes. So forward, back. And a short turn happens really fast. So you've got to do these movements really quick, really accurately. So I'm gonna have a look at the video and under the hood here to see what I'm talking about in real time with the pressure sensors of the uh, carve insole. So I was saying through the end of the turn, right through here, I wanna be more on the tail or heel of the ski. And we'll go a little further down here. Bang, red dots showing up. So I've definitely moved my pressure there's the fall line coming out of it. It's moved aft and you can see the ski tail stops displacing. Displacing here to help me steer stops displacing and actually cuts and shoots across the hill. So taking a look at the run where I deliberately stayed forward at the end of the turn and what you'll see is the tails continue to displace and wash out at the end of the turn there. So even though I've got lots of edge angle, like it looks like my knees tipped over, my tail is washing out, there's no grip, and the carve insole gives me the pure data of why that's happened, and it's because my weight is too far forward. And it's also interesting to notice that I have to use a lot of heel pressure of my inside ski to try and not fall over. So I think it's really cool because carve uses all this data, it's collecting all this stuff to build online coaching um, help for any skier out there to improve their skiing. So I think it's really cool. Okay, so today's topic, the importance of four and a half balance when we're skiing steeper terrain. Okay, we've got to move forward and aft in order to make those tails grip.
Okay, we started out with getting you to feel your feet, feel the pressures through your feet. We then looked at pulling the feet forward through the end of the turn. Then taking your skis off on a steep slope, 45 degrees angle, to feel your posture on that, on that slope, what you've got to do there. And then we just put it into our skiing. So I hope you guys enjoyed that information. I hope it really helps in your skiing. And yeah, see you next time.